Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. It is an early morning here, 7.22 on the seventh day of the week. And in, on the Gregorian calendar, it is the 25th. On our Father's calendar, it is the 16th or the 17th, I believe. And I will straighten that up. And I wanted to talk to you guys just a little bit. Um, this lesson is going to be the narrow gate, which we have all heard. In Christianity, we've definitely heard the narrow gate. Everybody heard this, has heard this verse, but I'm going to take this a step further because we're going to go over a book of the Bible that has been kicked out of the Bible. And let's start with this. Matthew 7, enter ye in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because narrow is the gate and troublesome is the way which leads to life, and few there be that find it. So we've all heard that, right? We know that there is a narrow gate. We know that it's a troublesome way and that leads to life. And the path seems very small. The path seems like it's a small path. And it says, you know, in, in this version that many do not find that path. And that should be very concerning in of itself if that's all you guys read. But let's take this a step further and let's go into... Um, a, a book that has, has been kicked out of the Bible. And um, if you look right here, you have Ezra 1, 2, 3, and 4. And Ezra 2 is, is Nehemiah in the, in the king. But if we're looking at um, the fourth book of Ezra, and we're looking at verse uh, chapter 7 here, it, it goes in, and this is, let me give you a, a pretext to this, is because our, our creator sent down an angel over to Ezra. And Ezra was extremely concerned about the condition of Yisrael. They were all in captivity. They, they, there was, you know, all the Babylonians around them were rich. They were living in Babel. Um, everything was really good for the Babylonians, but yet for the, the Yisrael, which is you, you guys are Yisrael. Anybody who wants to keep the law, statutes, and commands of our creator is Yisrael. And so... Let's in the context of this. This is a, a third fast that Ezra has been on. He, I think he's been on it for twenty-one days at this point. And when Yah is talking to him and the angels are talking to him, this is what he says. And I want to go over this because it does correspond with everything. Verse one. And when I made, when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me an angel which had been sent unto me the nights before, and it was Uriel the the angel. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra. And hear the words that I am come to tell you. And I said, speak on my Elohim. Now, this may confuse people when it says my Elohim, but he is not saying God. He's, he's saying an Elohim is simply a mighty one. Our Elohim, the most high Elohim is, is Yahuwah, right? But the angels are Elohims. They're, they're um, you know, when it says here specifically using the plural, thus, especially with the article of the supreme creator the creator of the heavens and earth. So when it's non-bold, lowercase, in reference of false Elohim, right? Because there are Elohim of, of the gods and they are they are not capitalized. And it's, it's not our Elohim most high, which is Yahuwah. And so an angel is an Elohim. Then he said unto me, let's continue on verse three, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great, but put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea and look upon it? To, and to rule it. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? And if you guys can vision this, what he's saying is instead of us having beaches and things of that nature, what if there was a extremely narrow entrance to the sea and you had to fight to get to the sea? Like literally you had to blow through it and water was coming out of it. That is what he's trying to get people to, to figure out. On to verse six. There is also another thing. A city is built and set up on a broad field, and is full of good things. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand, and on the left a deep water. So again, he's giving you guys a, a description of a city that if you can't just walk up to, you can't go through the gates. There is a fire on one side, water on the other. It's extremely dangerous to get into. It's hard to get into it. Then he goes on in verse 8, And there is but one path between them, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. 
right? And so it doesn't seem like a real realistic city because you're not going to have people walking up and, um, you know, carts and horses and oxen and all these things going into the city. You're going to go one by one because it is so dangerous to get into the city. Verse 9, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before, how shall he receive this inheritance? Guys, and we're talking about it. The, with these inheritances that we're talking about, we're talking about a kingdom for us as well. The city that we're working to, to what we're working to get is this city with fire on one side and water on the other. So this is, he's, he's leading up to something very huge here. Verse nine, if this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, I just read that, let's go to verse 10. And I said, it is so Adonai. Then even said, said he unto me, even so is Yashrael's portion. Because for their sakes, I made the world. This is what our creator says. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Now, when it says, because of, for their sakes, I made the world, my friends, this is what he's saying. Because of your sakes, anybody who wants to be a child of God begins with keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator and has the faith in Yahushua, Jesus the Christ, right? And so if you want this city, if you want this kingdom that is coming, he has made it for your sakes. And that's, that's very important. You guys have to understand that he is speaking to you because you are Yisrael if you take the gift. Verse 10. Um, verse 11. And I said, let's go back to 10. It is so Adonai then said he unto me, even so is this is Yisrael's portion. Verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail, but they are they are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. So he just said, prior to the fall of Adam, the path to the kingdom wasn't like it was. But he says, when Adam, in verse 11, had transgressed his statutes, that is how he made the world. It, it, it's very narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are, they are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. So this again is talking to you because if you are living and you do not labor to make the kingdom, if you are not reading your Torah, if you're not reading your Bible, if you, you won't know how to get into the kingdom because the, the modern day Christianity has us completely confused and they have us at eight years old, raising our hands. We're all saved. Everybody's saved. Um, it's safe. They don't believe that your um, redemption can be taken away regardless of your evil. Because it's always, you know, you can pray in the name of Jesus. And you can pray to Jesus in the Christian religion, which is a completely opposite of what the Bible says. The Bible says we're supposed to pray only to our creator. So they have a very confusing world that we can live in a lot of sin and get away with it. But that is contrary to what the Bible says. And I'm taking you guys to a point. So stick with me here. Now, therefore, why disquiet yourself seeing that you are but a corruptible man? And why are you moved where are, whereas you are but mortal? Why have you not considered in your mind this thing that is to come rather than that which is present? And what he's talking about there is Ezra was broken. He was broken about the case of his people. They were all in bondage. Everybody's in bondage. All the evil is flourishing. And the good, the people that still call upon the name of Yahuwah, they're all in captivity. They're all slaves. And then, then answered I and said, oh, Yahuwah Adonai, this is Ezra. You have ordained in your Torah that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the wicked should perish. And I'm taking you to the highlighted thing real quick. And this is where I'm going to bring this all together. Nevertheless, verse 18, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide. But for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and ye shall not see the wide. And he said unto me, verse 19, there is no judge above Elohim and none that has understanding above Elohim. Now let's bring this all together into today. Verse 20, for there be many that perish in this life. Why? Why? Because they despise the Torah of Elohim that is set before them. For Elohim has given straight commandment to such as came. What they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. 
This is talking to you, my friends. He has given us the, the commandments the, of, of Elohim, our, our Elohim, Yahuwah, yad heid vad heid. Um, Yahuwah, as some call him, Yahweh, um, as some call him. Um, the king has taken the word God and made that, it's just a surtitle. It's, that's all it is. It's not a, there's lots of gods, but our God is Elohim most high. It's, it's Yahuwah. So he says that, and he says, we have been given this. We know, like in the end of verse 21, what they should observe to avoid punishment. That is for all of us. If we read the Torah, we will know what not to do, because if we do it, we will be punished. Verse 22, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spoke against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of El Elyon that he is not. And knew not his ways. Verse 24. But the, his Torah have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes. Have they not been faithful and not performed his works? And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things and for the full are the full things. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told you shall come to pass. And the bride shall appear and she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. And whosoever is delivered from the four set evils shall see my wonders. Very important, guys. This is why they pulled this stuff out of the Bible. For my son, Yahushua, shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Guys, 400 years. He's telling us right here. His Messiah, his son. It says, the son. And for all of you guys that think there's a trinity and think there's three gods in one and you can pray to Jesus or pray to Mary or do that, that is not right. For my son, Yahushua, shall be revealed with those that be with him and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. After these years shall my son, Mashiach, die and all men that have life. So that right there is the main point that I'm trying to get. Number one, we are told that we need to keep these laws, statutes, and commands. And I understand that we are living in a time far different from what these times are, where we don't have the prophets that are sitting here crying for our stuff. We don't have Uriel coming down and helping us, but we have the Torah. And the Torah has been preserved for years and years and years. And if you get into the Torah, Genesis Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And you read this and you write it upon your hearts, minds, and souls and upon the hearts, minds, and souls of your family, you're going to create an enormously strong family. You yourself are going to be enormously strong. And when you look at the deception of the King James, they left us with 66 books, right? We know the number of a man. We know the devil's number 666. They left us with 66 books for a reason. And they tossed out all of these books. Imagine if we would have had this in, in the Bible about all the commandments and about his son, Yahushua, coming down and that Yahushua was going to die. All of the mystery in that Bible is going to be gone because we're missing all of the stuff. He told us prior what was going to happen. Yet in the king, we don't know this. We do not know exactly that the son of the most high, whose name is Yahushua, is going to come and die and that we may live right there. That gives everything. And these Sadducees and Pharisees and all these people, they all knew this. They all had the book of Ezra. Ezra was around. They all had these writings. They knew of this when their time was up. And there was a man named Yahushua who came and was born of a virgin. He was born exactly like this said, 400 years after. They should have been looking and they should have known. But yet instead, the Pharisees and Sadducees rejected our Messiah. And the question today I have for you guys are you going to reject our Messiah? Will you reject the blood atonement of our Messiah who came and became that, that Melchizedek priest? We don't need the Levites right now. We don't need sacrifice. We don't need any of that because we have our priest who is holy of holy of holy. He doesn't have to go in and wash himself all the time. He is just holy. And that is our priest. And his blood became that perfect lamb. And it is by that blood that we are saved, that we are able to call upon the name of our Messiah when we pray to Yah. And when we do that, we have called upon the name. Uh, that, is, that is what it takes. There's only one name under heaven by which you may be saved. But then you must grasp and embrace the Torah of God because the only reason that our Messiah was killed is because we do not walk the Torah and because the world did not walk the Torah and because we live in sin. Now, when we walk the Torah, 
We don't need 5,000 oxen to atone for our sins. We absolutely need the Melchizedek priest, our Messiah, who will come down and he will reign on Mount Zion. There will be some supernatural kingdom on top of a mountain. And for a thousand years, people like you and me, if we keep the law, statutes and commands and have called upon the faith of, and know the faith of our Messiah, we will reign there. And it's not going to be fiddles and violins and things on clouds. It is going to be war. For those thousand years, we are reigning with our Messiah and the world is still wicked, extremely wicked, so wicked. At the end of those thousand years, our Messiah has to call upon the power of Yah to burn everybody, right? We win in the end, but it's a long ways away and we must stay to the end. And in the days that we are in right now with the wickedness that is going on all around us, where they are corrupting our DNA day after day, we must absolutely understand what our creator wants us to do, how he wants us to behave. And this is, this is miracle season. Guys, this is miracle season. There are people of faith all over the world. They're trapped in Babylon. They're trapped in Australia. They're trapped in New Zealand. They're trapped across the world. And the world is coming down on them. The hammer of evil is up on us all. And this is the day today that you, if you can understand the words that I'm saying, it is time to call upon the name of our Messiah. It is time to call upon the name of Yahushua HaMashiach in a prayer to Yahuwah. Because that is the only way you're going to be saved. And then start learning and loving the laws of God. I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt, the best thing in my life is the law, statutes, and commands because it leads me to a place of holiness that I will not, I am, I'm not capable of doing the things that I was capable of prior to knowing the Torah. I'm a very dangerous person. I am a, all of us, every single one of us can do extremely dangerous things that are contrary to the Torah. And when I say dangerous things, I'm talking about the danger of your soul being lost and that that is the danger. And when it is over, if you die in your iniquity, if you die without the faith of our Messiah and you're not keeping the laws by which you will be judged by, that is a very dangerous place to be because you will be in a waiting room. They call it shoal and it is not a happy place. It doesn't sound happy at all. Guys, there's two things you must do to obtain this kingdom. One is you must call upon the name of Yahushua. You must understand that there is a Melchizedek priest that has come and he walked the Torah perfectly. He didn't cancel the Torah. He walked the Torah perfectly. He fulfilled what his father had set out and he was able to do it perfectly and yet he was slaughtered. That does not mean the Torah is gone. The Torah is good today, tomorrow, forever and ever and ever and ever. And we're supposed to be, you know, talking to you guys about this stuff every single day. We're supposed to be excited about this. This is some, something that we should be just loving on because our creator has given us a path. He's given us a way. He's given us a Torah and he's given us a timeline, right? We are not powerless in this assault against humanity. We have the power to know and we have a different kind of a power because we know the future, when you read the Bible, you know the future and you can look at the world that we are at today. It's playing out exactly, exactly. And in the book of Revelations, uh, let me let me end this with this last thing because in the book of Revelations, Revelations 14, it talks about this right here, right? Here is the patience of the Kadeshium. Now you want to be the Kadeshium. You want to be the holy people. Here are they that guard the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua. Guys, it's a, it's a two-parted road to make this happen. There's no better life than seeking the life our creator has made for you. And if you are stuck in Babylon, if you are stuck in wherever it is you're stuck into, my biggest encouragement for absolutely everybody is to read the Bible. Get into the Bible. Understand it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Do it again. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Do it again. When you do that, then hit Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do that four times, three times, whatever it is. Understand those nine books so you can recite them, so that you can quote them, so that you can lead your family with them. Because it is by those nine books that you will find salvation in the life to come. Guys, I hope you're having a good day. Today is a Shabbat. Much love to y'all. I'm out.